So, good morning. My name is Paul Bajenda, and uh, I work, or rather, work for founded a company called Digital Solutions, uh, for which I am the uh, technical director, um, which makes me a geek, I guess. I had I had Satim on, on, on radio this morning sanitizing the word geek and, 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 and it makes me feel better to call myself a geek. So I thought I should call myself. Um, what I'd what I'd like to do this morning is is just give you a, a history, a brief history of digital solutions, uh, which is inextricably linked to the growth of the internet and the world wide web. Um, as a way of, of showing you what, what, what has been possible and what, what I think will be possible in the future. I, going back to, to my first experience with the World Wide Web, I believe um, the first time I, I ever used the World Wide Web was sometime early 1994. Um, maybe some of you are old enough can remember web browser called Mosaic. Those, those who can't remember, it's very good. That means you're a bit young. Um, I remember the first time I saw Mosaic, I was an undergrad at, at university in, in New Jersey, in the US. And you know, being used to, to using Gopher, which is what we've been using uh, for information search and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the World Wide Web was like having scales removed from your eyes. I mean, you know, all of a sudden you saw pictures, you saw, you saw linkages that could be done between different sites that were related. And you know, for me, I, for me it, was, it, was, it was a very exciting thing. Not so much for the technology, even though I'm a technologist at heart, but you know, just seeing that you could, um, you could transmit information in such a, a vivid and, and compelling manner, I think for me, it struck me very strongly. So of course, as always happens when, you, when, you, when you're a student, um, the question was for me, what am I going to do after I finish studying? Because um, I'm a computer scientist by training, um, which usually means that um, if, you, if, you, if you're a computer scientist such as myself, uh, this is 1996, you're probably going to look at, at joining one of the Silicon Valley farms. Um, and you know, this was before the dot com, the dot com explosion, so maybe if I'd gone that route, I'd be a millionaire by now. Uh, but uh, I decided instead to continue, and, and I went on to the UK to study. Um, and while I was there, I did the first piece of work for which I was paid. And the entire negotiations, the entire contract, the entire you know, agreeing of terms was done entirely on the internet. Okay? Which meant that the people I did the work for, I had never met them. Um, you know, the, the most that they got from me was the emails I sent to them, and yet were able to transact. And for me, that was very important because what he told me immediately was that geography was history. Okay. <coughs> geography was history. Now, the, the, the application that I did, the, the work that I did at the time, was uh, an ISP, an internet service provider in Kenya, um, needed a billing system. And what I did was design it for them and, 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 and uh, implement it. And the second lesson for me there was that what the, what the World Wide Web had done was that it had turbocharged the, Soviet, uh, the, the software industry. It had opened up a whole new uh, set of possibilities. Okay? And for a person like me who I felt, you know, I felt I was trained for this sort of thing, you know, there was no question. I, I, you know, for me it was bulb went so goes off in, in my head, and I know that this is what I'm going to do, and I don't need to be sitting in Silicon Valley. I can sit anywhere because, uh, you know, the boundaries that are, are, are that we have, the borders, all of a sudden mean nothing. And again, crucial as I said, it's all of a sudden a new area, which is, you know, all these applications that are going to be made possible by the internet, either by providing. Um, applications people who deliver the internet or uh, providing applications that directly leverage the internet. Uh, this is something that I could do. And I also knew that it's something that I could do here that not many people could do and, and therefore this, um, um, the decision to come back was quite great. 
So digital solutions started in 1999. The first product we ever put out um, was a product called Butterfly. What Butterfly does is enables, um, if you're an owner of a cyber cafe, so you run a cyber cafe, which means that you provide shared access to the internet, to a um, job blog on the street. You know, you can only keep running that cyber cafe if you're able to make money out of the cyber cafe. And what we did for them is provide a piece of software that enables them to, to meet at a time, to, to, uh, to make sure that you know, you're collecting money uh, efficiently from the people who are using the internet. Um, it was moderately successful. Um, you know, it worked, and it showed that we could do something here that was new, hadn't been done before, and, um, and made a difference. In, in, in. Now, in uh, 2001, we, it, it became clear to us that, yes, the internet was the future for us, but um, as much as it was, the trend was moving, you know, the trend of access uh, was turning towards the mobile. So we, we began to focus more on the convergence of internet and, and mobile. Um, and we, we did a couple of things. We did some of the things that um, Stefan mentioned earlier, uh, things like uh, SMS information services. Um, and and those, those, were also, you know, those were also moderately successful. Um, they, they brought together, I mean, the, the thing that was important for us at the time was that they brought together this whole idea of internet technologies, which, are, which by which I mean things like um, not just HTTP, but also open source software. Um, you know, they, they enabled us to bring all these, these pieces together that would have been harder to do without the internet and provide solutions that are much cheaper um, than could be, could be done before with, with, with much more old-fashioned um, technologies. So once we've done that, it then, you know, it then okay, of course occurred to us that, look, I mean, there is, you know, already you, we have agreed that geography is, is history. You know, why don't we start playing in a wider field? Um, and in order to do that, we decided that we we're going to, to, to do a lot more open source work, which means developing software that we put out as open source and um, you know, build a business around them somehow. And we've, we've, done, we've done two projects so far. Um, one is called Mbuni. Mbuni is an MMS engine. Um, it's, it enables, um, it's the stuff that you don't see. When you send a, a photo from your phone as an MMS, it's the, the software that behind the scenes does the routing of the messages. Um, this message is, is destined for um, X, make sure that it gets there. This message is destined for a website, make sure that it gets there, and that sort of thing. And this project has been running for about six years. Um, the, the, the protocols and, and all that are HTTP, HTTP based, which, which, which again, I mean, ties into the whole, whole uh, web thing. We've also done another project called Baraza, which is an instant messaging platform for the mobile. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's also trying to bridge the mobile and, and the internet side of things. Now, in terms of the future, what, where do we think things are going? I think that the mobile is going to be key. I think that if I were, what, what, what I think I should be putting my energies into speaking on behalf of all the geeks is getting the infrastructure together to make it cheaper to deliver the internet on the mobile. I think that's, that's the big thing that's going to happen. And by that I mean the servers, the the software that, that does the, the moving of the bits around, um, I think that's going to be the big thing. Thank you very much.